Here we go. Oh, Ryan, thank you. Oh, I see what you mean about this. For uh, being the very first of my interviews in the secret ballroom of song and songwriting. It's my pleasure. And uh, we get right to it. Uh, I suppose for those of you who don't know Brian like I do, uh, his career has been long and excellent. I can give a few highlights. When he started with his trumpet lessons back in the early days. Yeah. And uh, eventually he ended up playing people. After he uh, graduated Berkeley uh, from Boston and he toured with Robert Ellis Oral. Peter Wolf House Party Band, RTZ Band, Ernie and the Automatics, and whoever would take the countless hours. So, this being about songwriting, uh, Brian's one of the best songwriters, certainly in the North Shore. Yeah, he's been talking to my mom. Right? East, east of Mississippi, as his mother agrees. Uh, so, I'm going to ask him a few questions uh, about songwriting and how he goes about it, and hopefully that will help all of us. Get some insight and inspiration in writing our songs. Okay. I guess the first one, which I got from my wife Randy, was How old were you when you wrote your first song? Well, I always took notice of television commercials when I was a kid, catchy little melodies and things like that. And I would make up some of my own. You know, walking to school, whistling, and I would, I found myself doing that a lot just to, you know, uh, occupy my mind if I had a long walk, I used to walk to school every day, so I would make up little tunes and whistle them. But as far as constructing a piece of music that was turned into a song, probably not until um, after I had been playing keyboards. For a while. So I started playing keyboards when I was about 16, I think, or 15 and a half. And I would say I probably started writing more like when I was 17, you know, in terms of whole songs. Little passages and little riffs, things like that, would come and file them away, and eventually, you know, would probably take a few of those and try to string them together in a song. So I mean, I've been writing songs since I was in my late teens. Once you started, it just kept going? Well, you know, a lot of the early days were spent um, playing cover songs. And uh, it wasn't until later on, probably, um, when I got to Berkeley, studying a lot of different types of music or, and practicing so much, ideas would just come to me and ended up forming a band with some fellow musicians called Shire, which was an original project. So that's when a lot of the writing really began, and that was um, sort of the beginning of the excitement and passion for, for writing something that we could call our own. Mm -hmm. uh, knowing a little bit about Shire and folks in it, there was one person that specifically stood out as a, uh, a teacher and an inspiration. Oh yes, uh, Stephen Camillo was a really good friend of mine and uh, also my songwriting partner in terms of the, the music portion of what went on with Shire. He did write some lyrics as well, but Stephen and I primarily wrote the music for Shire and a guy named Arthur Zervis, who was a very talented lyricist, um, would take charge of most of the uh, lyric duties. And I learned a lot from working with him, and I learned a lot from working with Stephen, and he was a good writing partner. We spent a few years together writing the music for Shire. Kind of a progressive rock. You know, we were listening to a lot of bands like Yes, Gentle Giant, Genesis, Emerson Lake and Palm, things like that. So it was it's kind of influenced by what I was learning at school, studying classical piano. A lot of instrumental passages, and, and then we were all reading Tolkien at the time, so the lyrics were really sort of um, fantasy escape based. Mm -hmm. Well, the age too. Yeah. The good age. Feel that way. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned writing the musical part. One of the questions I thought of the other day was, uh, how much do you think the instrument 
has to do uh, with your songwriting. Number one, and maybe number two, are there any instruments that you can think of uh, specifically kind of inspired you to write the song, as opposed to having a song and then just writing, you know, it was in mind using an instrument to work it out. Maybe you played a certain piano, like this one, uh, uh, guitar, and said, oh, it's just talking to me, telling me. That certainly can happen. Um, if an instrument is just so uh, strikingly better than what you normally play, or if the sound is just different, it can inspire different ideas for sure. Um, and I think I write a little bit different um, on the piano than I do when I'm playing the guitar. My guitar skills are pretty just basic functional, you know, uh, cowboy chords, so to speak. But that is, you know, inspired me to write a lot of songs too, but most of my writing, I think, is probably stemmed from the keyboard. Uh, this one now uh, is kind of a marathon idea question. Uh, when you write a song, do you know where you want to go with it? I mean, artist Sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. And how do you find, end up knowing where you want to go with the song? Yeah, I think every songwriting experience has its own unique quality, its own unique cadence, and how it develops. Um, it's sometimes based on a feeling about something that's happened in life, sometimes based on just a musical idea that sounds good. Sometimes it's based on a rhythm. Um, sometimes I have a clear-cut vision of where it's going to go right from the beginning, and I try to follow that through while the inspiration is still there. Uh, but there are other times, too, where I start out with an idea, and I just try to be open to what develops. Sometimes a song can take on a life of its own. I think what I've learned that's worked for me over the years is to not put yourself in a certain um, rigid framework of how you write, at least for me, I try to be open to anything and everything that can happen during the process that could take you somewhere where you might not think of going if you remain open-minded. Uh, any tools that you can think of? Uh, you know, hear stories of uh, watching Nashville, these writers, uh, factories down in Nashville, where songwriters are expected to sit day after day, show up for work, and write a song. Yeah. And, and any, you know, I've heard of disciplines that they use. Uh, any thoughts on that? Well, I, I've only had one experience with the Nashville process, and it was a very, very good process, but I suppose there are a lot of process, um, processes that uh, similar to what happens down there, depending on how the individuals work together. But I uh, went to Nashville and wrote with Tom Hambridge, did some writing with him for the, the song was, uh, the music's going to release for the new Running the Automatics record. And I found that um, you have to really be very open and be in a situation where you feel like you're trusting the person you're with in order to get the best out of what you're doing. Um, a lot of times I felt in my experience over the years that there are a lot of people who are very guarded about their writing and are reluctant to let anybody else into their process. Some people just work better alone. But in the Nashville scene, we try to cultivate that openness and just a willingness to just share ideas. And the thing I found that was amazing working with Tom and seeing his process was that um, there were no boundaries, uh, there was nothing that um, he made me feel like was wrong about what I was doing, uh, and there was an openness of him to throw ideas out, you know, just brainstorm, and, and I quickly realized, you know, I would present something, he didn't think that, that was the way to go, he would go somewhere else with it, suggest something, and I realized that it was okay for me to say I didn't like where he was taking it also. And once I felt that, we were just 
you know, sort of off and running, and that's where we got the best work done. And um, so you both go a third or a fourth or a fifth away until you kind of both felt that you yeah, had it right. His particular approach that day was just to see what I had already started, some things that I had started. So I played him a couple ideas, and I had a little bit of an idea where I was going to go with it, and he wanted to get inside of that. Sometimes he used that, sometimes he didn't. Sometimes he just took his inspiration and what it made him feel and went in a whole different uh, direction. And, and I was really uh, pleased at the way um, his, his, you know, he respected where I wanted to go with it. And uh, I, I enjoyed working with him. And I hope that someday I can do more writing with him. I had, I had that same type of situation with Stephen for years. I wrote a lot with Stephen, um, whereas there really were no you know, dangerous places to go with each other, where we would be offended or whatever. If we did something that just the other person thought was just even silly, it would be like, there would be no problem saying that. And it became like, okay, that's all right, you know? It wasn't a competition. It was, it was yeah, it never was a competition between Stephen and I. He was always, you know, um, very quick to say, that's a better idea than mine. And I was always quick to say to him, no, your idea is better, or, you know? And I think that's what you, Two writers or three writers or however many writers can really get the best out of each other. Like, I think about some of these early 70s comedy troops like Firesign Theater and Monty Python and the creative work that those people did together. Um, I think that to me is just the epitome of what it should be like. People just brainstorming and throwing things out and everybody realizing, yeah, this is the best thing we just right here, regardless of who put in what. It just, you let the work dictate what you do, not your own ego. Mm -hmm.